Hey y'all, I wanted to make a video showing uh, any mark product I have here. This is a uh, linear potentiometer. It's available from any mark as you can see on the top right. It's available for $40 and this is just going to be a quick review and a quick thoughts on uh, what I have going on here. I have a TC3 here just so I can get some uh, data out of it. As you can see it's made out of plastic. Now I did have a couple of issues with this when they uh, shipped it to us new the potentiometer hole is actually missing and we got an email from them saying that they made a mistake and they shipped us ones with that missing hole. Now the ID of this plastic case is an inch and an eighth so what I actually did was took a half inch ID bearing and it had an inch and an eighth OD with the flange and then in that I took a half inch to three eighths reducer so I could get my uh, hole centered so that's how I was able to make that that hole and then as well there's a mounting hole up here and this hole initially is actually uh, too small so the screw that they give you it sticks out too far so when you try to mount it you'll have issues so what I did was just drill this out big enough so the screw could be removed completely if I turn it you can see there's a screw and I'm able to adjust it and actually completely remove it if I need to and then also this little metal insert uh, there was a little cut out on this plastic but the metal insert is a little bit too big for that hole so those are the few issues I've had with it otherwise uh, physically it's made out of uh, on a 3d printer so it's got that 3d printer texture it's pretty expensive for what it is but we figured we'd give it a shot and see how well it works and then as I said I have it hooked up to a TZ3 so to get data out of it and you'll be able to tell on the right side I have my uh, Arduino code here if uh, you guys want to test it I just have it taking a buffer size of 200 so it fills up uh, it repeatedly fills up the buffer and then it just displays the average as you can see down here so right now there's a small margin of error but as you can see as I pull it the values go up and down I have it displaying at around uh, 100 milliseconds but this is just to uh, give me data smoothing because if uh, the buffer is either too small or if there is no buffer if you try, just try to read readings you get a ton of noise here let me show you for example here's a sample size of five as you can tell on the readings it's not moving at all and it's pretty much giving you worthless data 0 0.01 to 0.06 so well it's not useless but there's a lot of fluctuation there so as I said I gave it a pretty nice large buffer so in this case I can see it's 0 0.03 and it pretty much stays there so you definitely do want to do uh, averaging on this this is just what I'm using here so as you can see from right now I just did a really rough uh, zeroing of it. As you can see here, I uh, mapped it, the average from 24 to 800, and that's my range from uh, 0 to 6 inches. As you can see, the 600 is actually 6 uh, inches, but because I wanted hundredths resolution, I did a 0 to 600 and then I divided that by uh, 100. Otherwise, you just get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this takes integer values, the map function. And it will go above it. So if I stretch it to 7 inches or 8 inches, it'll go higher. This uh, map function is non-restrictive. This is just the parameters I gave it. Obviously if you do it from uh, zero and uh, full stretch you'll get much more much higher accuracy but I just did this roughly so as you can see sitting on, directly on its base I'm getting a value of about 0 0.03 and I gave it a value of around six inches but I can actually expand. Let's see here past 24, 27 inches. So as you can see I'm actually stretching this thing 27 and a half inches. Now as you might be able to tell right now my resting value is 0 0.17 and this is actually an issue because depending how the cord rewinds itself, if it doesn't rewind itself the way it was previously, all your values are going to be off. So let me give it another stretch. See again it changes every time I do a full stretch and let it rewind the value drifts and this is one of my uh, biggest concerns 
about this is uh, once we actually mount on the robot, we'll see how it performs. But if you do anything uh, that uh, stretches it out completely and then lets it rewind, you have to keep them keep an eye on that value from where it came out. Apparently now I can't get it to go back down to the values I had before. So I'm gonna probably gonna have to recalibrate this. But as you see the last four times I did it, it stayed pretty consistent around 0 0.26. But I've had it change on me uh, quite often when I do the full stretching. trying to get it back to what I had before but as I could as you could tell uh, at least this time it's staying pretty consistent but I've had it fluctuate anywhere to, uh, to well right now it's a quarter of an, uh, an inch off which is I mean that's that much different so like I said all depending on how it rewinds itself will depend on uh, what how good these values are so let's take a rough measurement and if we need adjusting we'll adjust it so start off at one inch on the edge let me see if I can get that better on the camera and right now I'm stretching it about one inch and I'm getting uh, about 1.18 on there. So obviously our calibration is screwed up so we're going to have to do is take out our map and then just display the values. Ignore the inch notation. I just left that notation in there for now. So at zero, we're getting a value of around 56, 57. We'll say 56. Let's go to a five inch stretch. It's around six, seven, eight. No, it's getting bound up on me. No, it's slight issues there. So we said six, seven, eight. And we said 56 on here. And that was actually a 5 inch stretch. So after adjusting all these values, let's see what kind of data we'll get out of it now. Alright, well it's saying it's resting, so that's pretty good. Stretch it, yep it works. Let's go to the full stretch. So pretty much I'm where I had it before. And as you can see by my uh, ruler, it's right at five inches. So let's go halfway, two and a half. It's right around there. As an, as you can tell, I mean, it's pretty accurate. So within a couple uh, hundredths of an inch. So there, there's about half an inch, maybe a little bit shy. There's about one inch. So I mean, it, it, it works pretty well. Like I said, I mean, here's about four inches. Now let's see what happens when I stretch it and let it rewind a few times. See right now that uh, that full stretch we're off by six hundredths of an inch. Let's try it again. And now we're back to zero. So if you have any kind of uh, long uh, motion this may be a concern uh, but it seems to work pretty well. Like I said uh, right now it, we're pretty much back to zero within uh, one hundredth which is pretty good. Stretch it back to let's say four inches it's right around there I mean it, it's pretty damn close so for all practical needs we have about a two foot and change stretch on here so overall I think it's a pretty good uh, product it needs a couple of improvements like I said uh, this hole needs to be made bigger the little uh, metal insert hole also needs to be bigger and the uh, hole for the pot actually needs to exist there was no hole in this cover plate but uh, otherwise yeah it seems to work pretty well I'm using a uh, the 12 bit ADC on this TNC3. So, if you're going to use any other type of Arduino, be aware that uh, most of those ADCs are only 10 bits. But for the FRC stuff, we do have uh, 12 bit ADCs. So, this works pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. And you could get more resolution, although I don't think it's worth uh, trying to squeeze more than a hundredth of an inch out of it because I don't, I just don't think it'll be accurate enough. As you can see, every time I stretch it, sometimes it'll drift by a few hundredths. See, right now it's off by six hundredths of an inch.
and right now it's back to two, two like I said. Every time it rewinds, if it doesn't rewind the same way, you'll get a slightly off. But for all practical purposes, practical purposes, if something is off by a couple hundredths of an inch, if it's a non-critical application, then this type of setup will work just fine. But if it's something extremely position sensitive, then I may want to think twice about using this particular model. But otherwise, I think it works pretty well. If you guys have any questions or thoughts, let me know.